good y'all so today we're going to be doing two different breaths because they work really well together the first one is called Kapalbati and the second one is called Kumbhaka um, these are pranayama techniques pranayama is I mean what that literally translates to prana is like energy that life giving energy and ayama is control so it's energy control breath control you know and that's where breath work has come from not necessarily has it come from because all around the world there have been breathing um, techniques used by shamans used by athletes used by martial artists warriors like all over the world you you can find breathing techniques um, in Africa you could find them um, in Russia you could find them um, in China you can find them here in the Americas in the shamanic um, cultures the indigenous cultures so breath has been a tool for thousands and thousands of years before documentation of it even being a tool so the word spir um, spira is a latin word that refers to breath so spirituality is literally like movement of breath but anyways let's get into the technique so the first one kapalvati you're going to be inhaling and then forcefully exhaling and on your exhale you're gonna push out your abdomen or you're gonna push it in rather so what it would look like is you inhale and fill your abdomen and on the exhale but you're gonna do it quick so And that, you know, kind of helps to energize your body, to fill you up with oxygen, and also to release the CO2. Now, contrary to popular belief, oxygen is not actually that great for the body, um, like excess amounts of it. So that's why we follow with the kumbhaka. Because with the kumbhaka, kumbhaka is a breath hold. You hold on your exhale. And with the kumbhaka, you know, it'll allow you, it'll allow your body to um, start to build up carbon dioxide again. And um, this is like Wim Hof, this is the science behind his um, technique. He does the deep breathing, 30 rounds, and then he does the kumbhaka, the breath hold. And that's really the science of it. Because if you just continue to deep breathe like that without restoring your uh, carbon dioxide, that's how you end up passing out <laughs> you know that's not necessarily a good position uh, not a good thing to do is just to continually breathe like that if you you can do continuous deep circular breathing but keep it long you know what I'm saying like you're doing like eight second inhales and like tens are like you doing if you can get there I'm trying to get there. You can do a whole minute for just one circular breath. That's incredible. Um, at that point, you would be building up carbon dioxide on your exhale. So you wouldn't have that same problem. But there's something called the Bohr effect. So when there's a high presence of oxygen, or a low presence rather, of carbon dioxide in our body, the cells, the red blood cells, they hold on to the oxygen they don't release it into the tissue they hold on to it that's not what you want you want it to release into the tissue so in low situations of carbon dioxide when people are like <laughs> hyperventilating having panic attacks that's what's happening to them and their body's like kind of panicking because it's like hey what's going on there's no no uh, oxygen in my tissues same thing when you're exercising or you're in combat sport and um you get all fatigued. Someone's <sighs> they're breathing all intense like that. They're not getting oxygen to their muscles. You're getting oxygen, you think you're getting oxygen in your body, but you're just getting oxygen into your blood cells. So you need that carbon dioxide balance 
for the oxygen to actually get into the tissue. That's called the Bohr effect. You can look that up. B O H R. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. The Kapalbati followed by the breath retention. Now, on the breath retention, you want to exhale all the air out. Do a little hiss to get the extra air out. And then you're just going to let your head fall and just relax. Relax your whole body. Just, you know, kind of enjoy that, that feeling, that sensation. You might notice that your mind is a lot stiller, a lot more quiet, you know? So enjoy that. And um, then when you're ready, push yourself a little bit, but don't push yourself too hard, you know? Once you hit, hit that point where you feel like you really need to breathe, go a couple seconds more. And then um, lift your head back up, and then inhale fully and then hold it and you can squeeze on your pelvic floor your PC muscles your kegels for women um, squeeze on that kind of like squeeze your forehead a little bit and like just imagine like energy rising up to your crown it's a nice little sensation hold that just for a little bit and then let go with it nice little release and just kind of let yourself drop a little bit relax yeah okay that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna do 21 of those kapha bati breaths and then we're gonna do the retention so it's not a competition you don't try to hold your breath for three minutes and then just, you know pass out you probably won't pass out actually your body will make you breathe you like can't hold your breath past that point it just won't happen but you don't need to do that to yourself right now so all right, let's get started. Just follow my lead. Take a couple breaths in. All right, let's go. So you can do a couple rounds of that every day. Um, right now, the, t the training that I'm taking, the teacher training, we also do that kumbaka, but we do it followed after uh, rhythmic breathing. Um, I'll get into that in the future. Um, pretty soon, I will need some some um, practice sessions so anybody that would be interested in that let me know I'll keep you in mind you know cuz I'm gonna give quite a few people free sessions 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 <laughs> before um, I start charging you know just so I can gain that comfortability and that confidence in my practice so let me know in the comments below if 
we would be interested in being one of my test subjects. Okay. Um, it was something else I was gonna say. What was I gonna say? Just give me a second. Oh, so you notice like you you can get a little nice little head rush from doing this. Um, and of course, there's like more techniques you can do, more things you can do to kind of enhance that feeling. But it's a good way. You know, if you're really trying to get off of those stimulants, if you're trying to get off coffee, if you're trying to get off of cigarettes, if you're trying to get off of weed or psychedelics or anything, this breath work is a really powerful tool for that. And um, I'll make a further video on that. But really, you know, if you can accomplish, you're not exactly getting the same, you're not like hallucinating and seeing things and like, but that inner calm feeling is replicated when you do breath work, especially if you do very long sessions. Like I've done two hour sessions before and literally walked out and was like lightweight tripping. Lightweight. Like things were squiggling, things had more color. I just was like hella giggly. It's possible. I mean, you gotta push yourself a little harder to get to that point. You gotta work a little harder, but the thing is that you can create that within your body, within yourself, and you don't need an external source to do it. Cause those external sources are always draining us in the end. In the end, they're taking energy from us, you know? They're unnaturally stimulating chemicals in our brain which are giving us that experience but then because it was unnaturally created and because they're toxic it's also draining us and depleting us so the best thing to do is natural things to to stimulate the production of dopamine and um, serotonin and all of these feel-good chemicals you know, we have that all within us. So, thank you for watching. Um, breathe easy, live easy. Breathe fully, live fully. Love y'all. Peace. Holla at you.